Hey guys, Poor here with another video, this time for Aphelios Jungle. This pick is something I've been playing for months before the Kenna Jungle Season 14 video came out, and it's gotten a lot of attention ever since I put the pick into A tier on my off-meta jungle tier list. You all voted Aphelios Jungle in my most recent poll of what pick to do next, and I want to deliver the methods and strategies I use to make the champion function. However, before I get into the guide itself, I have to be honest about something. After considering that this may be a possibility, and then being able to test it for numerous games, I've come to the conclusion that Aphelios Jungle is not as strong as it used to be, and is much harder to execute than back when I put Aphelios high up on that tier list. So this guide is going to be a bit different. I'll still go over the fundamentals for how the pick works, such as the clear, invades, playstyle, pros, and cons, but I'll also be talking about what exactly the change was that made the pick fall off, and how my attempts are going to fix or bandage these issues. I'll then close out the video by giving Aphelios a new updated ranking on my off-meta jungle tier list. With that aside out of the way, let's get into the introduction of the pick. Aphelios jungle's functionality comes from one key element, and that's the exact order of his gun cycle and how it lines up with the camps you clear. On paper, Aphelios jungle should really never work. He's a marksman who has five different guns, each with different amounts of DPS and effects. The clear should be inefficient and inconvenient. On top of this, Aphelios has a specific set of gun rotations deemed most effective by the player base that doesn't line up perfectly with the gun rotation you get by default at the beginning of the game. All of this means that what you would imagine happening is that Aphelios never has the right guns to effectively clear his camps, and if he does have the right gun to clear his camps, it might be breaking the optimal gun rotation to do so. What actually happens though with the clear is quite nice. Before I can explain how the clear works however, I have to explain how Aphelios' guns actually work for those who are unaware. His guns can be daunting at first, but he's actually not the most complicated to understand after the initial hurdle. Aphelios has five guns, those being Calibrum, Sephirum, Gravidum, Infernum, and Crescendum. Most people refer to these as green, red, purple, blue, and white guns for simplicity. Aphelios holds two guns at a time, and every gun has 50 ammo. Upon depleting the ammo, the gun automatically swaps out and moves itself to the back of the rotation. The two guns are considered primary and secondary guns, and the secondary gun sits in the background without being consumed. You can press W to swap between the two guns. Each gun has a different auto attack with unique effects, and every gun has a separate Q ability that costs 10 ammo in theme with what the gun's auto attack does. Each ability also casts the passive of whatever gun is in your offhand. Green is the sniper gun, and it grants Aphelios bonus auto attack range. The Q shoots out a long range skill shot in a straight line that connects with the first target it hits. Green also has a secondary passive effect where any ability that happens to land green damage marks the target, and Aphelios can consume this mark by auto attacking, which will cast an empowered auto attack with significantly increased range. Red is the lifesteal gun, and it grants Aphelios lifesteal on hit. The gun also gives Aphelios the overheal ability, which converts healing past max HP to linger as an additional shield. The Q causes Aphelios to gain movement speed and then attack rapidly while alternating between his main hand and offhand weapons. This only consumes ammo for the red gun, but applies the passive effects of both weapons. Purple is the crowd control gun, and it marks enemies hit, giving them a decaying movement speed slow. The Q consumes the marks to root and damage all marked targets. Blue is the AoE gun, and the attacks fire off an AoE blast in a cone behind the first target hit. The Q casts a flamethrower in a cone in front of Aphelios, marking all enemies hit briefly. Aphelios then locks onto all marked enemies and auto attacks them all with his offhand weapon, applying the passive of the offhand weapon as well. Finally, there's White Gun, which is a gun with a unique attack. Aphelios will throw out a blade at the opponent, and the blade will slowly return to Aphelios upon connecting. Aphelios cannot throw another attack until the blade reaches him. This means that the attack speed is very slow if Aphelios is far away, but extremely fast if Aphelios is closer to the target. The passive of the gun is unique, and overrides the passives of the other guns. Essentially, any time another gun would require White Gun to shoot off an attack from the offhand, the attack is replaced by a Chakram, which acts with the same properties as the White Gun's auto attack, but will then remain after returning to Aphelios and circle around him for 5 seconds. This duration is refreshed any time Aphelios uses a White auto attack on a champion. These Chakrams can stack up to 20. Anytime Aphelios auto attacks with White Gun, the blade is followed by every Chakram surrounding Aphelios, each dealing their own set of damage. This gun sounds the most complicated, and it is the hardest to grasp at first, but it's not that bad. For example, if I cast the red gun's ability while the white gun is in the offhand, the attacks from the red gun will generate the chakrams. I can then swap my guns to make white my primary, and now all of my attacks have the extra chakrams behind them. White gun's Q throws a turret on the ground that stays inactive and untargetable for a period of time until an enemy walks in range of the turret. At that point, the turret will start attacking the enemies with the offhand weapon effect, applying the offhand weapon's passive. With these five guns all having passives that apply other guns, it quickly becomes apparent that some gun combinations are better than others. For example, the aforementioned red-white is a popular combo due to how quickly red can stack up white chakrams. Another popular combo is blue-red, 
because the blue ability will cause the red gun to proc on every target hit, giving Aphelios a massive chunk of healing. The gun combinations are of course oftentimes tier listed by the Aphelios community, and the perceived strengths of the combinations result in the gun rotations you can see most Aphelios players use today. There are two main combinations, and I'll briefly go over the advantages to both. The first gun combination is green, blue, purple, red, white. This combination is on the newer side, and it takes advantage of the strength of the combo green-blue. Due to how the blue Q works in the way that it applies the green passive marks, using blue auto, then blue Q, auto attacking, swapping to green, using green Q, and auto attacking, applies six different instances of damage in rapid succession. Compare this to something like green-purple. Purple auto attack followed by purple Q, swapping to green Q and auto attacking, is four instances of damage in the same time frame. The perceived weak point of this combination is the transition from blue-purple to purple-red, both of which are viewed as weaker combos due to the lack of good interactions. The other gun combination is green-purple-blue-red-white. This combination ditches the high burst of green-blue, but instead gains added forms of utility with green-purple's long-range root and red-blue's insane healing capabilities. This combination still gets stuck with purple-blue, but for the most part it's viewed as the more consistent option with no bad combinations. As you can see, there are three guns always in the same position in both combinations, those being green first, and red-white being the last two. This is because red-white and white-green are two of the most valuable combos in the kit. Red-white is the highest DPS combo, and there's often a saying surrounding Aphelios known as red-white don't fight, being a warning to enemies who see Aphelios with this combo. The combo I haven't touched on yet is white-green, which has two main benefits to it. The first is the use of the white turret, as it attacks with the green offhand applying green marks. You can consume these marks with white auto attacks, all of which generate chakrams due to the attack technically being from the green passive. The other strength of white green is in the green Q, as the skill shot applies the offhand. This means that if Aphelios already has a large number of chakrams generated, the ensuing empowered auto attack from landing green Q will deal a massive amount of damage from a screen away. When considering gun rotation, red white into white green is essentially a must have, which is why the two leading combinations used end up only swapping the order of blue and purple. Aphelios has a starting gun rotation, being green, red, purple, blue, white. Now you might have noticed, but this does not line up with either of the gun combos Aphelios players like to use. The question is how to properly fix your rotation to get there. The method is this. First, you deplete red. This will cause red to be connected to white in the back. For the next while, you deplete whatever gun you've been holding onto the longest. This will mean you have green purple, you deplete green. You have purple blue, you deplete purple. You have blue white, you deplete blue. Now you have white red. Now all you have to do is deplete red before white, and your gun order is matching the second and more commonly used rotation of green, purple, blue, red, white. Accessing the other more modern combo is as follows. You start with green, red. Deplete red first, now you have green, purple. Deplete green next, leaving you with purple, blue. Since the goal of this combination is to have access to green, blue, you deplete blue next, leaving you with purple, white. Deplete purple and you'll see white, red, and you can swap the two to get green, blue, purple, red, white combination. It might seem daunting at first, but you get the hang of it super quickly in just a few games. Now, one issue Aphelios players can have is not knowing how to fix their gun rotation if they accidentally deplete the wrong one. This is also an easy fix. Let's say my current rotation is as intended, and I have green, blue, purple, red, white. Let's say I'm currently holding purple, red, but I'm in a heated fight and I press red Q in order to win, accidentally depleting my red gun. Now I'm stuck with purple, white, and my red is in the wrong spot. How do I fix this? Your first instinct might be to hold on to purple for a full rotation until you get back to red, and then deplete purple first to make sure you're back to normal. This makes sense intuitively, and is in fact how many players attempt to fix their guns, but it's actually a huge waste of time. Think about what happened to your guns when you messed up the rotation. You had green, blue, purple, red, white. You depleted red first by accident, so now you have green, blue, red, purple, white. Instead of holding onto purple for an entire rotation, giving you the terrible combination sequence of purple, white, purple, green, purple, blue, and then finally back to purple, red, just deplete the purple straight away after making the mistake. Now you have green, blue, red, purple, white, but you're holding on to white green guns. If you cycle completely normally, you'll by default end up in a position where you once again have red purple. As long as you remember to deplete purple first this time, you're back to the normal combo of green, blue, purple, red, white, and you didn't have to sacrifice any of your combos to fix it. With all of that out of the way, I can finally talk about the actual topic of this video, that being Aphelios Jungle. All of that gun talk was needed so I can explain how the clear works. One last Aphelios tidbit to go over real quick is how this level ups work. Aphelios has no E, and he has no skill points in his abilities. Instead, leveling up gives you access to one of three stat options, those being attack damage, attack speed, and lethality. Take attack speed at level 1. You start out level 1 with green red. You can't use any abilities yet since we don't get those until level 2. Since green and red are both single target guns, the only real options to start out are red buff or blue buff. 
I'll explain the red buff clear. Start by attacking the blast cone near red buff before red spawns, which gives you one less ammo. Start slapping the red buff with red gun until you have roughly 35 ammo left, or until the buff is a couple hits from dying. Smite the red, but don't kill it with the smite. Kill the red buff with green gun, and then immediately level damage, and then shoot green Q at large krug. Swap to red gun, and then use red Q immediately to gain movement speed towards the krugs, while making sure to hit both the large and the medium krug with red Q to get the green passive mark. The exact button combination to transition between camps is control Q, Q, auto, W, Q, and auto, all in a very quick time span. I mess it up all the time, even after practicing it for hours, so don't worry if it takes you a bit to get it down properly. At this point, you'll have about 25 ammo left on red, and somewhere around 35 for green. This is important to keep track of. Use red until you have 21 ammo left, then swap to green and start using that. Green Q will come up soon, so shoot that off before swapping to red and using red Q, and one more red auto to have 10 red ammo remaining. Swap back to green and finish off the camp. While you're walking to raptors, use red Q for the movement speed, fully depleting red. Swap to green and use green Q, fully depleting green and leaving you with purple blue. At this point, you now have blue gun for the raptors and wolves camps, which is great because you'll have the AoE gun for the multi-target camps. There's a couple of additional points to keep in mind while clearing raptors and wolves. For starters, make sure you cast purple Q as quickly as possible, because we want this low DPS gun gone. Second, you can have purple Q damage land on every target if you cast blue Q first. As you finish up raptors, take attack damage level 3. As you're finishing wolves, you should be getting very close to having white-red. This is fantastic because white-red is the fastest damage you'll get on single target camps. Note that this is also where you decide which gun rotation you want, as depleting purple or blue first will lock you into either green-blue or green-purple next. Cast red Q on the camp to generate chakrams, then swap to white gun to quickly kill the camp from up close. Doing all of this properly will get you to scuttle crab on time. It's a slow clear compared to most meta junglers, but it gets the job done and it gets you past the hurdle of the first full clear that many champions can struggle with. But what happens if you get invaded? Well, you have a couple options depending on how they actually invade you. One common invade path is for the enemy jungler to take three camps and then invade you on your blue and gromp. If they do this, laugh in their face and kill them with red white guns. Another alternative you might see is that they invade the side you're not on levels 1 and 2. If this happens, you can look for a gank since you'll have purple gun, which gives you a point and click root. So what do you do though if the enemy invades you levels 1 and 2 while you're on the same side of the map as them? Once you've finished your first clear, what your options are depends on what gun combinations you have. If you have any form of white gun, dragons are an absolute breeze. Aphelios can solo dragons as early as level 4 uncontested, due to how high the white gun damage is. If you have blue gun, void grubs are similarly easy to take. Which objective I go for is of course influenced by my lane states, but I also like to consider what my upcoming guns are when deciding what side of the map to play for. Purple is an especially good gun for ganks due to the slow and roots, but red can give you movement to help you catch enemies, green can snipe an enemy who's running away, and white can zone enemies with the turret. Don't be afraid to try for ganks that look good, regardless of what gun combination you have. One of my favorite things to do is go invade whenever I have the green-blue combination. Due to the high burst, I can catch a lot of enemies off guard during the invade, netting me camps. Point being, you have a lot of freedom of choice when playing a failure's jungle, and the guns are less limiting than one might expect. However, you might recall what I said at the start of the video about the strength of a failure's jungle. I wanted to give a fair guide to the champ and explain all the ways his clear and playstyle work in this role, so that you all can build your own opinion first. That said, I think a failure's jungle is actually not very good nowadays for one main reason. The important aspect of any champion in any role is their build, and it's something I haven't touched on for Aphelios Jungle yet for a reason. See, marksman items have changed quite a bit since I first announced Aphelios Jungle was strong back 3 months ago in the Canada Jungle tier list video. The build back then was as follows. Stormraiser or Shieldbow Rush, then Infinity Edge followed by the one you didn't build, or Lord Dons if it was needed. You also had the option to rush Collector, but I personally didn't do it often. Stormraiser was a great item for Aphelios Jungle, as it offered a very powerful one-item spike that gave you a lot of dueling options combined with sleep footwork. Shieldbow was a good all-around item for Aphelios, since it gave all the stats Aphelios needed to cover for his early weaknesses. Collector was a strong aggressive option that you could go for early damage boosts. Let's take a look at where those items are now. Stormraiser, Aphelios' best first item by far in my opinion, is completely removed from the game. Shieldbow is still in the game, but it's a completely different item, granting more stats overall, but sacrificing the lifesteal in any form of attack speed. Collector was reverted back to 12 lethality from the 18 it had, making this item also very underwhelming to rush. 
What we're left with, and what most Aphelios players have settled on, is rushing Infinity Edge outright. You would think rushing an attack speed item first would be preferable, but there just aren't any good options for Aphelios. Kraken and Borg have attack speed, but neither of them have crit chance and offer no defensive stats to make up for it. Phantom Dancer has crit chance and is arguably stronger now than it was before, but rushing an item with zero attack damage is questionable at best. Rapidfire and Runans are also low damage first item rushes that really don't see value until later in the game. The only two options are Infinity Edge and Collector, and you'll catch me dead before I rush 12 Lethality Collector. But rushing Infinity Edge presents a new problem. If your core build revolves around this item, you need more crit chance and attack speed to truly get value from it. In bot lane and top lane, this is usually fine because you have easy access to farm to scale for second and third item. However, Jungle Aphelios will struggle to make it to 3 items if his first item is weak, since enemy junglers can constantly invade and take advantage of the build. This problem didn't exist before because Stormraiser, Shield Bow, and Buffed Collector were all strong enough 1 item power spikes to give Aphelios the tool he needs to ward off invades, thus allowing him to power farm easily. Infinity Edge Aphelios just cannot do this, and is at the mercy of the opponent. This is why I think Aphelios jungle is much weaker now than it was before. If you were invaded before, you could cut your losses and fight back at 1 item. Now, you just get completely run over by everyone. However, there might just be a faint light at the end of the tunnel. In my quest to find an Aphelios jungle build that didn't suck horribly, a new build presented itself to me. One of my viewers, who was in my stream at the time, forced me to try out Titanic Hydra on Aphelios. I have a feature in my stream where when people sub to me, among other methods, they can receive Poro points to use in a Poro shop. One of the things you can buy in this shop is your choice of item, and I'll go the item. Maybe not in the exact game I'm playing if it's ranked, since I don't want to grief my team intentionally, but I will go the item if the viewer spent the points for me to go it. And Twitch viewer Gilded Bones redeemed one point and asked me to go Titanic Hydra on Aphelios. <laughs> Can I go Titanic right now? I'll go Titanic next game, okay? I'm not I'm not wasting my BF sword start. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I oh my card forgot. I can't do it. I queued up in Aphelios top game in Norms and rushed Titanic Hydra and discovered a few things. Firstly, Aphelios has some really awesome interactions with Tiamat. Normally, Tiamat has a set cast time that forces you to lock into an animation. However, Aphelios has two windows where he can just use Tiamat without messing up auto attack timing. The first is when using Red Q, as he can just use Tiamat whenever and it won't break the ability attack cycle. The other time is anytime you have White Gun, because his White auto attacks are apparently just coded differently than normal autos. With this, I learned that Tiamat is actually quite a strong item rush on Aphelios in any role. Once you have Titanic, you also get access to two key features. The first is the Empowered Auto Attack, and specifically how the Empowered Auto Attack functions with the green gun. You can actually mark an enemy first, either with green Q, or with another gun while green is in your offhand, then activate Titanic's active after landing the mark, and the ensuing auto attack will be an empowered one with Titanic's extra damage. This means your green Qs and marks can hit like a truck, and you don't have to commit the Titanic active beforehand to do it. Titanic also gives you an auto reset on the active, which is great for cycling guns faster while clearing, making the item very strong overall. Now I mentioned before that Bork and Kraken are tough to rush because they have no crit chance, but the other part of that is that they have no defensive upside to justify gutting your crit scaling. Titanic has 550 health, meaning it's actually potentially worth the lack of crit chance, since the extra tankiness can bridge you to your second and third item more easily. With this newfound knowledge of Titanic rush on Aphelios, I started coming up with a new Aphelios jungle build. The items are as follows. Titanic Hydra, Runan's Infinity Edge, and then you close out with your choice of two crit items. Runan's second provides a lot of benefits. It has a neat interaction with Titanic Hydra, where the Runan's bolts also proc the Hydra AoE effect, which means clearing camps, waves, and grouped up enemies is much faster. The item also just comes with all the stats Aphelios would want in a second item, with attack speed, crit chance, and movement speed all being stats Aphelios loves. With that, the goal is to scale into a full crit build, where Aphelios can take over the mid to late game. The runes help supplement the one Aphelios stat lacking in the build, which is lifesteal. I go Fleet Footwork, Triumph, Legend Bloodline, and Cutdown with Cosmic Insight and Magical Footwear, but you can swap out the footwear for any number of good inspiration runes like Cashback, Biscuits, or Triple Tonic. With Bloodline and Fleet, the lack of lifesteal from Bloodthirster isn't as impactful, allowing us to slot in the non-crit Titanic Hydra. The other option that I felt no desire to explore, but that could be good, is going Legend Alacrity, but rushing Ravenous Hydra instead of Titanic. The upside of the lifesteal could be more suited to someone's playstyle than the extra health and auto reset active. With either of these setups, I feel like Aphelios Jungle has a set of items that he can buy, while not making him nearly as good as he used to be, but can at least make him feel playable into a lot of matchups. If I had to put Aphelios into a new Canet Jungle off meta tier list with the Titanic Runan setup, I'd put him into B tier, which is still a downgrade from his prior A tier, but is at least still feasible if you're willing to suffer a bit for it. 
I hope you all enjoyed this guide, even if it's not the insane 1v9 meta defining strategies that you might have wanted to click for. I couldn't bring myself to sit here and tell you all that a pick is strong if I genuinely don't think it is, but I also think a failure jungle is really cool and worth showcasing to people. That's all I have for you for this one. I stream on Twitch almost daily and also have a Discord server, links to both will be in the description. I also have a Ko-fi page where you can donate to me and any tips are highly appreciated. Finally, don't forget to use my promo code PORO30 to get 30% off of your first three sessions on the coaching website tapin.gg. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!